this is why Joe Rowling and Steve Clovis are so clever, is that just because the battle starts, it doesn't mean the rest of the film stops. Because all the other characters and all the other relationships and all the other stories carry on in the battle. That's what's great. That's why you don't just feel it's just a battle sequence, because all those other things that you know from Harry Potter, like the humour and the, the, the romance and all that stuff, is all feeding into it. I mean, you know... Not Harry's not experiencing too much humour or too much romance, but the, although he does get a, a mid-battle kiss, which I instigated, I have to say, the other day, um, I, I said we should, we should we'd probably kiss at this moment, wouldn't we? It might be one of those sort of like I could be dead any minute now, Jenny. We should probably kiss. Um, so there's one of those moments, but it's like all those all those stories carry on within the battle. I mean, it's going to be huge, yeah. They all know that they the reason they're here, and the reason they're on this journey is much bigger than any one of them or even all three of them or even all of their friends and their families it's it is bigger than all of that and for three 17 year olds to sort of have that maturity and realize that that's what, what's at stake is much more important than any of their individual lives um is uh yeah is is quite impressive and is what makes it a very moving story the fact that these three kids no matter what faults they have are ultimately totally selfless he starts off the most composed and the most in control we've ever seen him in the first part of the, the seventh and then by the end of the second part he's almost totally lost his mind so it's a really interesting journey for his character because he's going from somebody who is kind of very stable and kind of in control and and evil and, and malevolent but it's nonetheless steady and as harry starts destroying parts of his soul he starts slowly kind of losing his mind as well it was just odd to see something that has always been so solid and so huge and so vast look kind of so small suddenly and full of stretches and rubble and and just look like it has been destroyed it's you know and it's it's going to be very odd for people i think to see that who've seen all of the films suddenly see the great hall in ruin particularly when i was younger it was quite intimidating to be to be in a a, a quite a quite combative scene with such an experienced actor was always quite intimidating so i think that sort of made me forced me to you know raise my my own standards um so yeah it, i've always, i've always enjoyed working with alan he's a, he's he's great and he's a fantastic actor i mean he's the way he thinks about scenes, the way he breaks them down, the way he thinks about particular moments is it's quite inspirational. Particularly, he's one of those actors which is rehearsing with him is fantastic because when you get an insight into his thought process, it's great. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I wouldn't try and sum it up yet. Um, I think it'd be very premature of me to try and give a synopsis of what the last 10 years have meant while I'm still in them um, I think you can only really tell what something's done for you or done to you or done with you when you finished or something and, and, and so I'll, I will one day I'll be able to look back and say I know I've, I know certain things about it I know I've had a great time um, I know I'll miss it I know I'll miss my friends I, I know that I can't quite comprehend of a world in which this isn't part of my life and so that's going to be very odd um, very very strange indeed There'll never be a frame of any of these films that I don't look at and connect immediately to a memory of this place or of somebody or of somebody not even involved in the films, but somebody who I met through them. Uh, every day, you know, every day is connected.